Okay, we're going to look at what happens when we are borrowing in our mortgage and saving in our pension at the same time in terms of the fees we are paying now. So let's just draw some axes on the screen. And I'm going to assume this person gets on the housing ladder at age 28 and retires age 68. And let's, this is a, a, a indication of his mortgage. So his mortgage starts at £200,000 and he pays it down over 40 years. At the same time he's paying down his mortgage, he's saving for his pension. And let's say to keep things simple that he, he saves up a pension fund of £200,000. Now that will give him a pension of about £7,000 per year. Okay, so fairly sensible thing on, on first sight. Pays down his mortgage, gets on the house ladder age 28, pays down his mortgage, and at the same time he's saving up for a, a, a retirement with a 7000 a year pension. Let's look what's happening though to understand this halfway through. So at some point between age 28 and 68, it won't be exactly halfway through because of compound interest and second order effects and the like, but let's just assume to keep it simple, it's about halfway through. He's got 100,000 saved up, because he's halfway to his 200,000. He's also halfway through his mortgage. So he's got 100,000 in mortgage. Now, on his pension fund, his fees could vary from anything from about 0.5% to about 3.5% when you've included hidden charges and a platform fee, for example, and annual management charge for an active fund manager. So let's assume he's paying 3.5% fees on his pension fund and his mortgage, if he hasn't remortgaged since taking this mortgage out, a good deal would be about 4.7%, which if you think that base rates are 0.5%, that effectively means he's paying a fee to the bank of 4.2% for use of this mortgage facility. So he's paying 3.5% fees on this 100,000 he's saving, which means he's paying 3,500 in fund management fees and hidden charges and he's also paying 4200 in what amount to banking fees. So if we think about what's actually going on halfway through, he's effectively got 100000 in a savings account, albeit it is a pensions investment account, and £100,000 on borrowing, which could be like a credit card or an overdraft. It's a mortgage in this case. But if you, if you add... 100,000 to minus 100,000, you get nothing. So he's actually got nothing at the moment. Well, he does have a house, that's what he's paying a mortgage on. But he has, aside from the house, he has an investment of zero and he's paying fees of a total of £7,700 per year to manage this investment account of nothing and this is somebody who is not rich he's living in a 200,000 pound house and he's targeting a 700 a 7,000 per annum pension so the question is is this just one of those things or is there something we can do about it and the good news is there is something we can do about it because instead of saving for our pension and paying off our mortgage at the same time we can actually pay off our mortgage with all our savings first and then only start saving for our pension when we've paid off our mortgage. And this way we will massively reduce the amount of fees we pay. So I'm going to clear some space on this graph. And now we can look at what happens if instead of paying our mortgage and saving for pension at the same time, we just pay our mortgage off first and then start saving for our pension. So now we're going to pay off our mortgage much quicker because we're, we're putting all our savings towards paying off our mortgage, then having paid our mortgage off, all that money we're putting in our mortgage is now spare to start putting in our pension. 
So I'm still going to assume here we're targeting a £200,000 pension which uh, fund, which will give us a £7,000 a year pension, but we're doing it much more efficiently. Now remember before, we were paying 7700 a year in fees in the middle for not actually uh, doing anything much. Well, if you, if you multiply that by 40 years, you get approximately £300,000. Well, what we've done here is we've halved the length of time we are paying off the mortgage and so half the amount of time that the bank's got to take fees off us and we've also halved the amount of time we're saving for our pension so we've halved the amount of time the uh, the pension fund has to take fees off us so what that effectively does and there are there are compound interest effects and second order effects here that make the calculation quite complicated but to put it in very simple terms that will halve the amount of fees so in reality we can reduce our fees to 150,000 pounds from the 300,000 pounds we were originally paying now that's quite a saving when you think that this is a person who's trying to save up a 200,000 pound pension pot for a 7,000 a year pension and is living in a, a 2,000, 200,000 pound house. So just by that simple piece of financial planning, pay off your mortgage first before you start putting money in your pension, then put the money you save in your pension, you can reduce your fees from 300,000 to 150,000.